Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle. Um, today I wanted to talk about something that's been... Uh, it's not a question on my mind, it's just a thought process that's been going through my mind and I thought I'd try and share that with you. And that's the balance. The balance that you feel in the energy consumption you use at home, the amount of solar power you're using to power your home, your EV, how much electricity mm -hmm. your EV is using. All of that is your energy consumption and it's a balance. And... I look at it in terms of numbers and also feel. So from numbers point of view, I was using about 3,200 units of electricity a year before I went solar, and I'm supposed to be generating about 3,600 units of electricity a year. So that tells me, you know, I'm quite well balanced. But when I then add the load on for my electric car, for the Kona Electric, then I'm not very well balanced. So I'm using a about 150 to 170 kilowatt hours units of electricity a month to charge the Kona Electric. So that's around 2,000 a year. Well, 3,000 for the house, let's say, rounded down. 2,000 for the car is five, and I'm only generating 3,600. The balance isn't quite there, is it? And yet in the summer months, what I'm feeling is that I have got the equilibrium. I am feeling like I've got enough energy coming in in these 500 kilowatt hours that I'm generating each month during well I've generated that in April May June and July if you've seen my solar videos you'll know that um, but 500 kilowatt hours a month is enough for me to uh, look after the house consumption heat the hot water and charge the Kona electric so I'm feeling in balance during those months so what it tells me is if numerically I must be out of balance and yet in the summer months, I'm feeling really well balanced. Well, that obviously means in the winter months, I'm going to be nowhere near that balance. So I'm not going to be able to use um, just solar energy to heat my hot water, heat, provide energy for the house and charge the Kona Electric. So I'm going to be using grid energy during winter months. Or if I add more solar panels, then the balance will tip in favour of more solar to less usage. Now in the summer I'll probably have an excess, but in the winter I'll probably have a better equilibrium. So it's that balance, and I'm feeling in the summer that I'm well balanced at the moment, but I also notice that there are times when I just want to do more. I want to do more charging, and I want to do more hot water at the same time, or have the uh, washing machine on all at the same time. So I'm, I'm feeling that there's, there's balance if I make an effort, but it's not easy. So my 3.9 kilowatt P system isn't providing quite enough energy to give me the balance that gives me the best feel. Also numerically in the winter it's not giving me um, the balance either from what I'm going to be estimating. So what all, all this balance stuff, what do I mean? Um, well one of the considerations that I've been having as you know um, is what car to have in the future. Do I get rid of the Kona Electric and do I go for something else? So let's say I went for um, a Tesla Model S or an I-Pace or a Nissan Leaf, an older one, um, or the MG. Yep, the MG. Many of you probably think I'm considering the MG at the moment, which I am. But with let's say four miles per kilowatt hour uh, as an average, and I'm getting 5.1 to 5.5 at the moment, so that's a 20% loss in efficiency. Yeah, 20% loss in efficiency to go to the MG, or even more if I go to something like the Model S Tesla, then 20% less uh, energy efficiency would be 20% more solar that I need to provide that balance so the less efficient car I go for the more imbalanced I'm going to feel because I'm going to need more solar energy to keep it charged to do the same number of miles and that balance is going to go against the solar so I'm going to be using more grid energy it's not going to make me feel as good and although you're probably sitting there thinking what is he going on about well until you've owned an electric car and solar panels and you want to be charging your car and you want to be powering your house from solar because that makes you feel good then you know, it's very difficult to say but once you've got that feeling and desire to use just solar energy then it is addictive you do want to use it it's better for the environment it's better for the grid it's better for your pocket it's just better it does feel good to do it 
So if I went for a less economical car with less efficiency, um, I'm going to have to have more solar panels and that's going to cost me a few more thousand pounds. So is it viable? Is it right to go for um, a lower efficiency car? Because most people will think, you know, the MG does 160, 170 miles of range. Who cares how many miles per kilowatt hour it gets? Who cares what the efficiency is? It's so cheap anyway. Does it really matter? So if I buy one of these cars with lower efficiency, then I'm going to have to either increase the amount of solar that I generate at home to be able to offset that reduced efficiency, or I'm going to have to charge more out or charge more from the grid. And that's going to shift how it feels to me on balance. It's going to feel wrong using energy from the grid or going out to charge from public chargers because I seem to have found a perfect so we say happy point where I really do enjoy charging my car from just solar energy and it feels in balance. Life feels right. So if I go for a car which is less efficient, I'm not going to have that same feeling. And I'm also going to have the desire to want to install a battery to maximize my use of the solar more or add more panels, etc. So a less efficient EV has consequences, not just because it has less range, but because it's where do you get that energy from? Okay, if you're just driving an electric car and you don't care where your energy comes from, I suppose it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. But for me, having added solar to the solution, that feels right. It feels like the best thing to do. It's certainly the cheapest way of powering my car, but it's probably the best way of powering your car for the environment. And some people are saying, well, why? Why is that so good? Well, let me give you an example. You know how people say if everyone went electric right now, then the grid would fail because it can't cope with capacity. And, you know, in theory, I guess they might be right. But also the grid says that um, they do have capacity. But they're being unrealistic because not everyone is going to turn their car on and charge it all at the same time. And not everyone is going to buy all at the same time. So if you use that amount of... Um, <laughs> poor logic and bad example and turn it around and say well if everyone goes electric like I have and buys an electric car but puts solar panels on the roof then the grid will actually benefit from that because as a user of electricity from the grid since I've gone electric and solar I now use less electricity from the grid even though I'm consuming twice as much electricity I don't consume as much from the grid anymore. So if everyone did that, if everyone put solar panels on the house and had an electric car, it would help the grid, not cause any burden or any excess capacity whatsoever. It would reduce the capacity on the grid. So, yeah, if you look at both examples, both are extreme and both are unreal, aren't they? But the point is, if you do go with solar panels on your roof, then you do have a positive effect on not just your life and your costs and your fuel for the car, but you have a positive effect on the grid. You have a positive effect on the environment as well. So if you have the opportunity to put solar panels on, it is the right thing to do. It's the right thing for you financially, and it's the right thing to do for the planet as well. The balance, and I'm feeling it during the summer months, it's good. And I want that balance to feel good. I want that feel good factor. So that's part of a consideration for me as to what car to go for. If I do go for a car with less efficiency, I'm going to have to consider whether to get more solar panels. But also there's something else to think about. And uh, let me show you. It's on the uh, Kona Electrics feature for charge current. OK, so if I go into the EV menu. Over here we have uh, charging current. And Hyundai and Kia cars, I believe they all have this. We have these uh, charging current limits for station and portable chargers. And I have them set to minimum instead of maximum. And the difference is basically this. When you're charging at home on my Zappi charger and most electric cars will charge at 1.4 kilowatts because that's the industry standard. So if the sun goes behind a cloud and your generation excess goes to say 1 kilowatt or 1.2 kilowatts, the Zappi cuts out and your car stops charging. When the sun comes back out, it starts charging again. Well, in this car, with charging current set to minimum, instead of cutting out at 1.4 kilowatts, it will only cut out at 600 watts. 
So basically, as, a, as the sun goes behind a cloud and I'm generating 1.2 kilowatts excess solar, mm -hmm. I'm still charging. At one kilowatt, I'm still charging. At 800 watts, I'm still charging. And that difference on um, autumn and winter days will make a big difference on how much solar you can get into your car. Equally, it means first thing in the morning, I can be charging earlier for probably an hour earlier. And in the evening as well, with the lower rates of solar, I'm still charging. So I think that that difference uh, of being able to charge on lower rates gives me a 10% advantage on efficiency because I'm using 10% more energy from solar than I could otherwise do. It's helping balance by another 10%. So if I'm already 20-30% out for a less efficient car, if that car doesn't have a reduced charge current feature like this Hyundai Kona, that's the equivalent to another 10% difference. So 2,000 units of electricity a year, that's 200 units of electricity a year that I can get out of my solar system that I wouldn't be able to otherwise because the car won't enable it. Yeah, if I'm talking 20, maybe up to 30% difference in efficiency in cars, add another 10% on, 30 to 40% difference in the amount of solar energy. That's really big. And you start to think to get that equilibrium back, I'm going to have to put 30 to 40% more solar on the roof. That's a big cost. So actually, having an efficient electric car like the Ionic, the e Nero, or the Kona um, makes a really big difference because of that feature and of its efficiency itself. Um, it does make your ownership feel more in balance. So that's what I want to share with you. That feeling of balance and the feeling that during the summer months is really good for me. I'm sort of not looking forward to the winter because I know I'm going to be out of balance. So I'm going to have to keep in mind that it's a full annual picture. And also my thoughts about what car to have. It's all on my mind about how I'm going to feel driving a less efficient car. Um, this Kona Electric is hard to beat. The features that it has, the efficiency that it has, the range that it has it is such such an all-rounder it is such a good electric car that considering changing it is really really hard thank you for listening to me thanks for um, sharing my thoughts if you've shared these videos and thank you of course for subscribing if you have take care for now and see you again soon Bye bye